Hello everyone. In the previous uh, video of part two, we did a preview of multiple target engagements. Um, I know I said I'd go deeper into multiple target engagements and strategies for that, but I find it necessary to uh, first talk about dialing or not dialing when. So stay tuned. So at first, uh, dialing wins seems like another thing to worry about, but I believe that the payoff is worth it when you learn to do it. And um, like with anything, the more you do something, the better that you get at it. And the same principle applies with dialing win. The more that you do it, the easier it becomes and the more natural it becomes for you to do it. So for the most part in this series, we've mostly done wind holdovers instead of uh, dialing wind. And most people uh, gravitate towards uh, dialing elevation and holding for their win, which is, I still do that. And uh, that's still a tool in my belt. I've found some benefits also to uh, dialing win. Before we get to those uh, benefits, let's talk about when I would generally not dial win. One of those uh, situations when I would not dial for win is when the wind is switchy. If it's a head or a tail wind, I would not recommend dialing win. Uh, because the bullet could go in either direction during a stage. I just leave my wind at zero and hold for it. Another situation is when the wind is slow enough to where the most I would hold is the edge of the plate to keep the bullet centered in the plate, then I would generally not dial wind. And this is what that could look like. If the wind is low enough to where if I hold the edge of the plate, it would be in the center, then I generally would not dial for wind. I would just hold over. So if the wind is high enough to where when I hold the edge of the plate, my impact is at the other edge, then I would dial wind because I would need to come off the plate to keep it centered on the next shot. The clock, also, if the course of fire calls for three or more targets with different distances, I would just hold over for wind. And the reason for that is because I still have to dial for my elevation and not only will I have to dial for elevation, then I would need to dial for win and that would just take more time. So it's easier for me just to hold over for win in that situation. So what happens when you dial? You're basically just re zeroing your rifle at the specific distance that you're shooting. Um, normally you would zero at 22 at 50 yards, but let's pretend I'm shooting at 100 yards and my point of impact is point right or point five um, right. That means the wind is coming left to right and it pushed my bullet 0.5 right. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna need to dial 0.5 left to re-zero my rifle, so to speak, at that distance. So that the impact is right in the middle. Instead of 0.5 right, I'm gonna move the impact 0.5 left. So you're shifting um, your point of impact against the wind because you want to dial against the wind um, when you're dialing wind and so that your point of impact is as close to center as possible. Now let's talk about why dialing can be beneficial and then go into some scenarios where it could be a benefit. As you can see, uh, this is an example of the impact three reticle um, and I also have the, the loop old PR2 reticle. As you can see the dots are, um, the dot is a fine, fine aiming point and surrounding it, it's very open. Also in the um, impact three reticle, you have some open space um, that's surrounding the dot. Ignore that line over here, it's just telling you the measurement of that dot. And that dot for the impact three reticle for a Zico is 0 0.036 most, that's a fine aiming point. And also you have less clutter surrounding that dot so that you're able to spot your impacts a lot better. And the same thing with the PR2 reticle. I really like the PR2 reticle because it's got a lot of open space in the middle and you have a fine aiming point right in the middle. I know this reticle doesn't have a dot in the middle. It's just a crosshair. Um, so this is probably a bad example. It's a reticle I just made up. But when you put that dot in the middle, especially with a small KYL, it's a lot easier for you to have a fine aiming point, especially with small targets like KYL, like that dot that you would see with like the loophole PR2 reticle or the Zico, 
there's a small dot right there like you can put that dot right in the middle of this small target and you have a finer aiming point also i believe that it's intuitive our eyes will instinctively want to gravitate towards the center of the scope um and then you, well, we're gonna want to center that center dot in the middle of the target that's just the way i think our i mean at least that's the way that my mind works my my eyes usually gravitate towards the center that's where my focus normally is and I'm, i normally um would want to center up that uh center dot in the middle of the target so we could use this instinctive ability to our benefit by dialing wind when we dial wind we're putting our point of impact as close to the center dot as possible also when dialing wind i believe it's easier or should i say it becomes more natural to correct to the center on the follow-up shot for example let's say you dialed your wind on the stage but your um, impact your point of impact is going to be at the edge of this uh small kyl in my mind i'm going to want to correct that either by holding left so that the next shot is centered or by dialing 0.1 left so that the next shot is is uh, centered so when you hold for wind it could feel like it takes more effort or intentionality to correct to the center of the plate versus when you dial let's look at this example let's say the wind is coming from the left and i'm holding left edge let's say the impact is over here instinctively i'm not going to want to leave the plate to correct to the center on the follow-up shot but when you dial in, it's a lot easier for you to correct. Let's say like you, let's say you dial a wind and you miss off this edge. All you have to do is uh, turn your windage and your point of impact will be in the center. And I think the reason for that is our mind goes against leaving the plate to where if you're holding the wind and you shoot the edge, you're not gonna wanna leave the plate. So you just keep shooting the edge and the point of impact is around here. So what if the wind picks up, then you're gonna miss off the edge. Versus when you dial wind, let's say you're uh, still hitting the edge, you're gonna immediately wanna correct it and put it towards the middle. It's more instinctive for us to do that. And if that left wind picks up, there's less chance of you missing off of the right edge because you corrected to the center. I know some top shooters that never dial win and they still do all. So I'm not pitting one against the other. I'm just bringing up what in my opinion seems to be the most intuitive method. You could still win matches and never dial win. But in my opinion, dialing win gives you a better edge over two methods. And I think part of the reason for that is it's more instinctive for us um, to look at the center of the crosshair versus holding over. So what's a scenario that I would dial win instead of holding? If the wind is coming consistently from the right side or the left side and it's high speed, then I would dial wind. So if the wind is switchy, head or tail winds, then I would hold over for wind. But if the wind is consistently coming from right or left, then I would dial it. And if it's high speed, that's when I would definitely dial it. Or if I could hold the edge of the plate and still make a correction to the center, then I would not dial it. But if I'm at the very edge, and my impact would be at the edge, then I would dial a wind. For me, that's what a high speed wind means, that I have to hold the edge of the plate and my impact would be at the other edge, or I have to come off the plate entirely to correct to the center of the plate. So let's pretend that this target is at 200 yards and the wind calls for a full mill right wind. You could either hold that wind at 1.0 mils or you could dial a full mil right and then put your crosshairs in the center if the bullet doesn't impact the center let's say it goes into the edge then you could just make a minor correction to put it in the middle or you could dial 0.4 right to put that point of impact on the center i also find it beneficial when there's only two or less targets in the stage for in this example if there's one target at 100 and one at 200 then i find it beneficial to dial in but if it's a troop line that has three targets or more then again i would hold for win so that you don't have you don't have to keep dialing your win at every distance another strategy that you could use is similar to bracketing your win that we talked about in the previous videos let's say your min hold 
is 1.0, 1 1.3, and 1.6. Normally, we would try to fit those wind calls into your uh, target. So this is from 1.0 right to 1.6. So your possible wind calls should land within the target. But what if you're dialing wind? You could dial your minimum and then put that center on the right edge. So this would be your 1.0 mil wind and then your 1.6 would be right here. And then you could bracket the wind this way. So you're still dialed 1.0 right on your scope. And instead of leaving the plate and going all the way over here, you're still within the plate when you dial it. And you're still within the possibility of where it could impact based on your min and min and max. Another strategy I could employ is dialing 1.3 on my scope. So let's pretend I'm dialing 1.3 on my scope. Sorry, it's kind of blurry. And what I would do instead of putting the center at the edge, I would put the center in the middle right here. And that would be my 1.3 hold. And then this would be my my full mill hold and this would be my high wind 1.6 so i'm still within the possibility of where the target could hit based on my min average and max so i'm just dialing the average and putting that average in the center another place that you could dial your win is during moving targets which we could go into more details on that probably later but let's say your win is coming from the right and it's about 1.0 right and it's consistent then I would just dial out your wind by dialing 1.0 right on your scope and then just holding for the lead. So if it's going right, I'm just going to hold 1.3 if your lead is 1.3 if it's going right. And then if it's going left, I would just hold 1.3. If you dial your wind, then you're going to have to do a different solution for each side. So if you dial out your wind, it's just going to be consistently 1.3 if it's going right to left or if it's going left to right, then you would just do 1.3 and your leads would stay the same. We could, go into, we could go into more details regarding movers later on. Like I said earlier, at first dialing wind seems like another thing to worry about on your list of things that you already have to worry about for a match. But I believe that the payoff's worth it once you get used to it and good at it. The more, di the more that you dial wind, the easier it becomes. I still hold over for win, especially when it's prone or a modified prone when you have a lot of targets at different distances, three or more targets with different distances. But if it's uh, two or less targets and there's a lot of positional shooting movement, then that's when I would dial win. So a general rule of thumb is you dial against where the wind is coming from. If the wind is coming from the right, then you're going to want to dial right. If the wind is coming from the left, you're going to want to dial left. At first, this may seem confusing, but the more that you practice it, um, then the more it, it becomes easier. Just remember that when you're, if you want to dial it right, you're going to, for most scopes, you're going to want to dial counterclockwise. If you want to dial left, you're going to want to dial clockwise. And that's something that you may need to practice at home and just, and just get it ingrained in your mind. So again, if my wind is dialed right, 1.0, then I'm shifting my point of impact right. I'm gonna exaggerate. So this is a right wind, it's coming from the right, right to left. Then my point of impact, we're gonna be shifted right so that it goes against the wind and the wind will put the bullet in that target. And vice versa if the wind's coming from the left. Also, don't forget to re-zero your wind after every stage. You should have a post-stage checklist that includes zero, zeroing your wind after the stage and zeroing your elevation. And I also like to um, zero my parallax, so to speak. What I mean by that is I like to put it at 150 yards, which is usually the most forgiving uh, parallax for rimfire. So I like to zero my parallax at 150, zero, so to speak. Zero my elevation and zero my wind, because if you don't zero your wind, then you're gonna take that wind into the next stage. And you don't want that to happen. So make sure in your post-stage checklist you have your you have your um your wind elevation and parallax zeroed this next little segment is just a little mental drill i like to do when i'm not shooting matches um just so that i could uh 
ingrained in my mind which way I need to shift if I miss off the left or right edge. What I like to do is I like to imagine where I'll need to dial if I miss. In this example, if the wind's coming from the right, the bolt's gonna curve left and the splash will be right there. So that means I'll need to come right. So in my mind, I'm gonna practice this. I would practice this is I'm gonna need to turn it counterclockwise. Let's say it's 0.1 right so that I shift my point of impact right. And in the next shot, the bullet should be on the target. And vice versa, if I miss off the right, then I'm gonna wanna twist it the other way, counterclockwise, to be on the plate. So twisting it this way is gonna shift your point of impact right, and then twisting it clockwise is gonna shift your point of impact left. And you wanna to try to get used to those motions to the point where you, you understand where the bullet will shift depending which way you turn your dial. And you can do that by uh, just doing some mental drills. You can even do it while you're at home and just pretending you're, you're going through the motions in your mind and then using your hand, turning it clockwise or counterclockwise to make a correction.